What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim. Going to be playing a game on PTCGO today, and today I'm rocking Bulu Vigavolt. This is a very popular deck recently, just in the last week. Uh, obviously, Vika Ray kind of was the big Vigavolt deck at the dawn of this format, but that deck has been very highly countered. Lots of people playing things like the Tapu Lele promo. We also got uh what just like Dedenne's in deck things like that and Weavile even uh kind of rearing its head just being uh a direct answer to Vika Volt uh Vika Ray decks just because of how many abilities are usually in play so yes they've been pretty heavily countered but uh Bulu still kind of around as a pretty relevant Vika Volt variant right and a lot of people have switched Hop ships over to Bulu to give it a try. Not only do you have this Aether Paradise Conservation Area, which is just an awesome kind of answer to Shrine of Punishment. Not only does it bump Shrine of Punishment, but it also decreases the damage that your Bulus receive. So it is just fantastic for that as well, which is very good. Uh, Bulu also just has no weakness. So very strong Pokemon GX here. Very simple archetype, and I like it. Uh, I do like it a lot. It's very cool. So uh, I had to restart. I actually, oh, and we are playing against a Guardi deck. So we'll see how that goes. This should not be good for us, considering that this was like one of Bulu's like classic bad matchups. Like last year was that Bulu never wanted to play against Guardi. You just can't do 230. And I had a Tapu Coco promo in here. And it like literally was like the 61st card and it got cut. And I was like, I'm not going to need it. This is fine. But I uh, I actually had to restart because last time, last game, I was like rolling and then like I was playing against a shrine deck and they had a Coco in the active and then I uh, I put down my Aether Paradise Conservation Area and tried to Nature's Judgment without discarding. And I was like, oh yeah, I'll knock it out. And I forgot that it decreases damage to the Lightning Pokemon as well. So that was sad. All right, let's, uh, let's see here. We're going to start off with an Ultra Ball and I think... Uh, then I'm going to just go get myself a Grubbin, right? So, like, that seems good. Let's – I kind of want to keep that Escape Rope, but, like, I also just want to keep the Energies. Let's Ultra Ball away the Choice Band and this guy. I feel cool with that. I want to keep the Volkner in my hand, and I want to Lele for, like, a Lily or something. Probably seems like the best bet. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, let's Ultra Ball for Grubbin. Yep, done. And then we're going to go get ourselves a Lily, and we're just going to draw like a really big hand here, and we're going to hope that that kind of gets us the turn two Vikavolt. I think this deck just wants to Lily. It's the closest thing to Tempest that you have. It's not great, but it's all you got kind of, so you're going to just uh, hope that it works out here. And we're going to Lily. Let's see what we get off the Lily. Oh, and we've got it. This is great. So we can Nest Ball here, and I could Nest Ball and just go get myself another... Bulu, and then I could like escape rope and all that, but I just uh, I don't really need to do all that right now. I think I'll just nest ball and get myself probably another Bulu. We're gonna say like I don't think my opponent is going to like Guzma up my guy right now, and then I don't really feel like I need to uh, put my Aether Paradise Conservation Area down yet. I don't think that my opponent is going to, you know, I don't think that they're going to attack me for damage this turn. I think that they're probably just going to use this Diancie and they're going to Sparkling Wish. So that's that's my guess. But other than that, you guys can see the deck setting up pretty well. It's doing what it's supposed to do. They're probably, yeah, they're evolving into Curlia here. They're going to end up Sparkling Wish and then they're just going to evolve. And this is kind of a cool card. You can heal 30 damage for each of your fairy Pokemon which is cool if they have taken some damage, maybe taken some heat from Shrine of Punishment or something like that. That is, that judge hurts, not going to lie. And I, honestly, this is the kind of, now we're in the Bulu Shadow Realm, right? And this is why I don't like Bulu compared to Vika Ray, because we just don't have Tempest, right? So now we're out here just dead drawing until Infinity. And we're probably just going to lose this game. So this is just like... Uh, all right, that's fine. This is just how it goes, right? This is the the Bulu life. You just uh, you just hope you don't get you need judged. But it's fine. I would have temp if I was Vika Ray last turn. I probably would have Tempest. So it's uh, it's unfair to say that you know uh, unfair to say that it would have gone any differently. I don't think. Let's see. I got my stadium out. I think I can like kind of confidently 
attach to the active. I can also escape rope, make my opponent bring up something else, and I could poke into it, but that kind of feels silly as well. I think I just want to attach to the active, and then oh, my opponent's going to eventually get that guardy out, though. I think we'll just attach to the bench here, and then we're just going to horn attack. There's no real point in attaching to the active, I don't think, because my opponent is going to probably use the Sparkling Wish to evolve, and then it's still like the same amount of turns to a KO. They've got the Field Blower right away to enter that Aether Paradise Conservation Area. They are not messing around with Shrine of Punishment, apparently, so like they're just like not having it. I could put like an Oranguru in this list. I just don't really think that Oranguru is going to get there all that much. Uh, this deck doesn't play a lot of like thinning cards. And sure enough, yep, here we go. So we see my opponent has got their Guardi active uh, turn three. I've got nothing going on. We got a pretty nasty judge there. And we're just going to be sitting here chilling waiting to draw out of this mess and that uh that makes me extremely nervous this car this carnivore is just absolutely huge uh, and is hitting me for one hit ko even though i only had one energy on myself so that's great that's just that's just fine so we're gonna try to escape rope here and we get another bulu but nothing else going on so that's fine let's just uh let's put this down and let's just escape rope and we're gonna have my opponent bring up something else. And I'm gonna promote a Bulu with like no energy, I guess. Or maybe I should have promoted my one. Uh, potentially should have promoted my one with energy because now if my opponent has Guzma, they're gonna like knock out. But anyways, this this is just looking like a classic, you know, just get judged into nothing scenario. Yeah, they do have the Guzma. So here comes this guy and that's fine. So this is a wrap. Uh, you know what? Uh, if we don't top deck a supporter here, just good game to my opponent. You got it. Uh, there's nothing, 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 nothing I could do about this. I would have to get double Vika Volt and hit it with a Vika Volt. That's my only chance of... Nope. All right. You know what? There you go. Smiley face. You got it. Well played. And I'm out. So we're going to try another game here. See if we can get the Bulu deck to draw a little bit better. But that is kind of showcasing my very real concerns with Bulu. I feel like it's just it is just less consistent than Vika Ray. It just is. And dude, am I playing against another Guardi deck? That would be ridiculous, says Fairy, Colorless, and Psychic. So that would be horrible. But yeah, I you know watch some Bulu players at Cuffs just like sit there and Cynthia, Cynthia, Cynthia just never get Vikable out. And that was uh that was pretty concerning to me as well. I know I can like mess with my list a little bit uh, for sure. I mean, we've got a turn two Vika Volt in this hand, but you know, again, if my opponent does judge me, uh, or if they do Marsh Shadow me or something like that, this is just a much weaker, uh, it, it's weaker draw engine, right? I'm not playing Mysterious Treasure. I have less, is, is this the same person? I might even be playing against the same person. I don't know. To be honest, I didn't really pay that close of attention. So that would be kind of funny if I got paired to the same person back to back. Uh, but this does appear to be Guardi again. So we're going to give this another try, which is unfortunate because I feel like Guardi is like kind of taking a backseat in the format right now. So I don't want to just be showing off like, uh, you know, Bulu versus Guardi like uh, for three games in a row. But that may just be what we're serving up today, guys. So let's see what we end up getting here. Does my opponent have a Ultra Ball? Okay, so they're going to go get a supporter. This hand is great. I think that I just Nest Ball and pass uh, honestly i think i just nest ball attach my grass energy and pass and i just like take my opportunity to get you, you just don't mess with it you know you like i got the vika volt we're not playing anything from my hand we're just gonna let it ride like that now i have seen some bulu lists playing steven's advice as well steven's advice is a or not steven's advice steven's resolve right uh, Steven's Resolve is a valid supporter option for this deck. I mean, obviously, with like Lele, you can go get yourself a, uh, you can go get yourself three cards, right? And just that, that's that. So, honestly, I mean, if I had a Steven's Resolve in this hand, this hand just got even better. So, that's very good. Uh, but they've got a huge hand over there, and there's like no way for me to disrupt it. Uh, it's another. I, I just can't help but just see just the weaknesses in this deck as compared to like. Uh, as compared to Vika Ray, I just, uh, 
you know, it's just it's just rough. So I think I'll Ultra Ball away the Lightning and whatever my top deck is next turn. I don't want to attach an energy quite yet. I mean, I guess I do because then I can actually hit the knockout if my opponent doesn't knock me out. But I'm also like, you know, honestly, a little concerned that they will knock me out. So let's uh, let's see how that goes here. I honestly just uh, you know they might just get it, and then and then what? Then I'm in like a world of pain, right? So that would be super rough. They've got a huge hand. They've got an eight card hand. They might just be sitting on it like that. Yeah. So uh, they need five, uh, six energies between the two of us, or five and a choice band. One, two, three, four. Uh, if they have a secret spring and a choice band, there they go with that Oracorio. They're going to go get themselves two energy with the Oracorio. And then uh, do they have a choice band in hand as well? That would just be that would just be great. That's fine. I think this is PTCGO telling me that I just need to not play Bulu this weekend for sure. <laughs> this is a trip, man. This is a this is wild from Guardi. You know, I just uh, I haven't played against Guardi in like a week and a half on PTCGO, and then sure enough, uh, here it is. So my opponent's going to go get Ultra Ball. Maybe that means they're going to get another Lele and just grab a draw supporter. And then they had two rare candies in hand. Man, they had a lot of rare candies in that hand. Probably going to go get themselves Lele or Naranguru, I was going to say. And then they're just going to shuffle draw six, hope they get that choice ban, and uh, knock me out. So three, six, nine, 12, 15. Yeah, they're 30 short right now. And we're going to hope it stays that way, because if it does, I could always rip the choice band myself and knock them out. And that would be huge. That would be really big. But uh, I feel like the, just my opponents literally, I feel like they just always have it. They're just like, yep, choice band, here it is. That's what I wanted. There it is. See? I feel like they, they never miss it. it is, it's, just, it's just like, you're just <laughs> If something can go wrong, it's going to go wrong, period. That's it, okay? So, like, that that was bad, all right? So, here we are with our Bulu deck. Turn two. Uh, my opponent has got a Guardi with five energy on it and a choice band. I've got a Grubbin in the active. But at least I got to poke my, my opponent's Guardi for 30 damage. Oh, yikes. Okay, so here we go. There we got a Vika Volt. And let's Cynthia see what we can do off this. And see, I would have got the choice band too. That would have been pretty dope. But uh, yeah, so I don't really have a lot going on. I kind of have to like... I don't have switch in my hand either. I can I can Volkner for a switch next turn, but there's like they're just gonna knock out my active. I think. I think I need to bench this thing, but I don't have the grass, so I need to strong charge. You know what? And it's just like if they just have Guzma, like I have to attach this energy here. I can't not. So I have to strong charge. I don't have to strong charge two energies. I'll just put one. We're just gonna do that. And then we're going to see how this works out. And then I'm going to put my Aether Paradise Conservation Area out too. And we're going to hope for the best. You see why I had to attach at least one energy though to my Bulu? It's because I can only strong charge for two. I don't have an energy in my hand. Attaching the Lightning with Volkner doesn't do anything. Unlike Rayquaza, uh, Rayquaza just such a smoother deck than Bulu. This is just feeling so rough all the time. Just really, really bad. And look, we're, I've never seen Guardi decks just tee off like this either. <laughs> I wish I my Guardi decks just got, you know, Natalie has. <laughs> I wish my Guardi deck got like, you know, five energy in play turn two. That was great. It, oh my gosh, and look at this. And they definitely have the Guzma. Oh, okay, they don't have Guzma. All right. Sad, but this is uh this is where this is where we pack it up. I think this is just uh <laughs> some lost cause at this point. There are too many guardies out here doing too much damage. We had to hope that maybe they just didn't get everything they needed, uh, but they just have two gigantic guard of wars. There's uh yeah, there's not much else to it. So let's uh we get to Cynthia, thank goodness for that, because I was like not trying to uh I was not trying to, to Volkner this turn. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. So let's do that. We're going to get these guys on here. And then uh, we need to Cynthia and hopefully get another Bulu into play. And uh, go from there. And we're going to need to, like, poke this. Uh, we're going to need to poke this guy. Let's see. This is just such a bad hand, honestly. Let's see. Um, I think I need to get a Bulu, but I can't, like... 
I don't have an attachment for turn, so maybe I should have like not. Um, but I didn't want to draw into like all my energy and then not be able to strong charge. So I like that's the reason I strong charge before the Cynthia there, because you can you can like to increase your odds of drawing the energy. You don't strong charge first, but then like. Buh. But then, like, if I Cynthia and draw into two grass, I'm like, wow, I am, I'm, I lose. So that's just, that's kind of the situation we're in. Let's see here. What do we, we got, honestly, next turn, I might have to, I might have to just go get myself a Lele. And then we have to, like, poke this. No, there's nothing we could do. We have to go get ourselves a, yeah, let's do that. I guess, like, there's a chance my opponent doesn't knock me out. Let's go get these. And then let's uh, put a, I guess I can, you kind of need to put a Layla into play. And then I need to get myself, I mean, I need to promote something that's not beakable. I could get myself a Layla, that's fine. But then it's just, this is just all bad. I think, okay, we're going to do that. I guess a Bulu is kind of what I need to have in play. But then they're just going to, it's just, ah, I'm just so stuck. I don't even have a grub in. I can't even get a grub in right now. So, yeah, we're just going to get a Bulu. That's fine. Okay, thin the deck a little bit. We're getting a Bulu. That's where we're at. We're about to knock this thing out. At least we get to take two prizes. Nature's Judgment. Yep, and we're going to discard. Yep, that's fine. 210 damage. Taking a knockout, very good. At least we got to say we took two prizes with a Bulu deck. And that's, uh, yeah, that's fine. So there's two more grass energy. I knew I was short on grass energy. Uh, felt weird to be at my last one. But here at this point, they're doing three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. If they just get three more energy onto this Gardevoir, they need, uh, or a DC and a choice band, my Bulu is knocked out. If they can knock out my Bulu this turn and Diantha, why not? Why not just have a Diantha in your hand? So I know for a fact they're getting back to DC Choice Band and just going to blow me up. Uh, or a fairy and a, yeah, just all sorts of bad. So I think uh, in retrospect, I, I was supposed to get the Lele this last turn. Um, but even then, I don't think I would have been able to put enough energy on my Lele to knock out this Bulu, I don't think. I think, um, yeah, I just don't think that I was going to be able to. I think, like, what? So I would have been able to put three energy on a Lele if they got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. That would have been short. I would have been able to do 21. I would have been able to do, if they get just a DC, yeah, if they get DC choice ban. Um, now, if they put DC fairy onto this thing, then I guess I, then, yeah, the Lele could have gotten there and knocked out the Guardi. Um, it just, uh, I guess I didn't really, I didn't really, you know, imagine that this Guardi was gonna actually be that big, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh yeah, that Guardi is gonna be huge, so it's fine. This is, uh, this is fine. This is just a giant Guardi just blowing up my Bulu. This is a horrible matchup. This has always been a horrible matchup for Bulu. This has like never been good, and now it's just like, <laughs> now it's just, uh, you know, I wanted to show off Bulu, man. I want to show it off versus like, <laughs> the meta game <laughs> sure enough we just got two guard oh my gosh they missed it okay they did not get the choice band why did they not diantha for the choice band i know that that choice band is right there they could have hmm interesting play there all righty so we uh actually don't lose if we just get back-to-back -back guzmas so let's attach this grass and let's uh let's go get yeah we're gonna energy recycler now Let's throw one, two, three, four, five. Throw those back into the deck. Then all we got to do now is we just strong charge twice. And I've got literally everything I need for game in board now since they've got uh, two, you know, they've got two Lele's that I could just go back to back. Guzma, knockout, Guzma, knockout. So, so long as they don't mess with my Vika Volt. <laughs> Uh, we're actually fine. So yeah, let's go do the good old nature's judgment there. And yes, we'll discard, do all that damage. Very good. And then if we could just Guzma again next turn, and if my opponent doesn't do anything to stop me, then we get there. So that would be, <laughs> that'd be wild. I don't know. I think, I think that my opponent, if I had to guess, I think my opponent forgot about Aether Conservation Paradise. I think they just forgot they were just counting it up and we're like, yeah, I've got enough energy for knockout. And then they just were like, wow, I needed the choice band. Uh, and then they 
they probably, that's just probably what happened. So I doubt that they're going to nerf my hand here. I don't think that they're going to judge me or, or marsh out of me. I'm feeling like I probably just got to steal this game. And yep, nope, nothing there. So they could still get a marsh out of, but I'm thinking that we just get to run away with this one. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness. And now all of a sudden, you know, I'm actually getting rewarded for getting the Bulu and not the Lele, even though the Lele might have been the correct play. But yikes, this is a, this is a lot. My opponent's deck is setting up very well, though. I mean, goodness, they have gotten literally every card that they have wanted, they've had. So they, yes, now there's, and they've had just huge Gardevoirs just the entire game. No Sylveon, nothing. Just like, they just played a couple Cynthia's, a Diantha and a Lily, and they just have gigantic, gigantic uh, Gardevoirs every single turn. I don't, I don't know how they did it, but uh, apparently, apparently they did. So they've got this uh, Oracorio though, which is pretty cool. I like that. I've seen that in a couple decks, which has been pretty cool. Now that Professor Letter is gone, so that's definitely pretty neat. And we have got game here on my opponent's Lele. So cool stuff. They had to put down too many Leles. Bulu loves knocking out Leles. That's like one of the only thing Bulu does well. So here we go. Strong charge. Doesn't quite get there versus big Pokemon, but it can knock out Leles very well. So you got to play a lot of Guzmas because this is the only way you win games is by knocking out Leles. So let's see. Well played. Oh, yeah. We got there. Opponent scooped it up. Uh, okay, so that, you know, it doesn't feel good to win like that, but, you know, it's cool. We take it. All right, we're going on to our final game here. Going to play one more game with the Bulu boys, see how that works out. Maybe we can play against a non-Gardevoir GX opponent. That would be preferred. I'm not, I mean, to be honest, yep, just not something I'm really trying to play against here. Uh, the Aether Par Paradise, though, got there. You never know when. That might just, like, buff out. Your opponent forgets about it. It's good versus a lot of decks. You know, it's good versus uh, Vika Ray as well. It's kind of a funny matchup. You know, they can Marshadow you and all sorts of crazy stuff. I mean, you could play Marshadow. I just don't really know where people are going to put it. The deck already seems inconsistent enough. And then, like, I don't really know where... Uh, like Marshadow fits into the equation. So let's uh, let's just go get this guy. And then I feel like even though we've got ourselves a turn two Bulu, you don't really want to... Huh. Yeah, let's just start the grubbing. I was going to say, even though we've got a turn two Bulu, I think I actually do want to play a supporter this turn. I don't really want to just sit here with my grubbin active. And then I don't want to just like nest ball for another grubbin and then get turn two go for Volkner, like I could do that, and then turn three Cynthia, that just feels very slow. So we might be playing against a, let's see, Mimikyu, we might be playing against like a Marshadow deck, or the Malamar deck, so let's see, I think I'm just going to go get myself a Nest Ball, I am going to get myself a Bulu probably, um, or let's see, we've got three Bulus and two Grubbins, let's get ourselves a Bulu, that's fine. So let's go get that. I don't have any energy either, and I would like to attach an energy this turn, so I think I'm just going to start off with a turn one Cynthia. Shuffle that in. I could have Lele'd for, like, a Lily. Oh, wow. So, yep, we're very good at this game. Let's go. Got ourselves a Vika Volt. I'm going to put that Aether down next turn, just in case my opponent is playing a Shrine deck. They might be playing a Shrine Malamar deck. So we're going to want to have... Oh, don't do it. No! <laughs> No, no, no. Why did they Mars away my Vika <laughs> Natalie, we couldn't have seen that coming. <laughs> it's just I did everything I could. Oh, but they just had turn one Mars, got my Vika Volt out of hand. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> Alexa, you know what to do. <laughs> this is horrible. Oh, and they're going to filch. Okay, so let's hope that I can top deck into something here. All right, so Aether Paradise, very good. Let's attach a energy to my Bulu as well. And then let's just Lily for four and see if we can make up for the fact that our, nope, we can't. Okay, so yikes. All right, this is fine. Let's uh, just pass it on to you, my guy. That's, you know what? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just too much. It's too much. I need to stop. I can't. I just got my Mars. Oh, I just got my Vega Volt Mars away. I'm just so, so, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> so horrible. What am I playing against over here? Is some sort of evil shrine Mars looker deck with shrines and uh, Macargo, and now they get to just you know stack whatever they want on top of their deck with smooth over and they, my Aether Paradise didn't last very long. This is this is just depressing. Okay, so I think this turn we're gonna you know, we're gonna hope that things buff out. I can Volkner and just like definitely go and get myself a Vika Volt. But that just feels bad. I mean, it just, because uh, then I have this Vika Volt in the active position. I'm just going to be getting like kind of, you know, messed around with. That doesn't feel very good. So I think that that's probably just what we do, though. I don't think that there's really that or I Cynthia and hope I draw into it. But then that's kind of a greedy play. They're going to start resource management. And then they're going to look her and they're going to draw the cards they want off the bottom of their deck. Oh, this is so sad. This is this is oh, just a rough, rough scenario. All right. That's fine. Maybe one day we'll get this grubbing out of the active position. We're going to have to find ourselves like uh, an escape rope, something like that. That'd be good. Okay. So here's another nest ball. I think I'm just going to grab myself another grubbin no point in putting another uh another bulu out that's for sure and then i think what i could ultra i i think i am just going to oh i know what i'm gonna do duh let's just do this and then let's volkner for an escape rope so at that point like yep we're gonna guarantee ourselves an attack very good and let's just do that and then uh and then next turn we'll just cynthia and we'll figure it out from there <laughs> and hopefully we can go get ourselves you know uh, whatever it is that we need. So very good. Let's just, uh, we're going to Nature's Judgment. No discard. I'm not into healing yet. Uh, no, I don't want to discard. So I don't need to, I don't need to do my wilderness yet. I'm going to save that for when I'm a little bit lower on hit points and maybe times are a little bit more bleak, you know, a little bit more bleak than that time that we got, got our Vicable Marsed away. That was, that was nuts. But Okay, so they're probably, now that I've taken a knockout, they're probably going to look to start using their counter energies. They're probably going to be doing cocoa spread shenanigans and all of that. I, oh, they have they can flippity flap. And they can also rally back with this shaman here and their counter. This just looks like a very kind of, uh, you know, typical counter shrine deck. I think uh, Alex Shemansky actually won a local league cup in our area with a similar kind of deck, a similar kind of archetype. Oh no, this actually just escalated way worse than I thought it was going to, because they can discard. So that's, uh, I think that this is just an auto lose situation. I don't think like, I, I should have seen that coming, yes. Uh, but also, what more could I have done? I can't just sit out here poking things. This is horrible. So this, <laughs> that's fine. At least they can't counter energy me now, right? So that's, uh, this this is this is just great. So let's uh, sure we're gonna need to put another attacker into play, and then let's Cynthia. I should have put the choice band onto my Bulu, but I'm a little tilted right now, so we didn't quite get there. But that's fine. Let's then also put a grass energy onto our Bulu, and uh, you know what? Uh, batter up, you got it. So go ahead. I don't think that like okay. I think I have to take a knockout. Uh, I don't think that there's any. Like, I can't just sit there and take this shrine damage all day. Uh, now, granted, I shouldn't have just, like, played right into the Mimikyu. I should have tried to knock out the Mimikyu itself. But the longer I wait, the more damage builds up. It's just a... Uh, yeah, I think it's just a lose-lose scenario either way. I think this deck is just built to, uh, to deal with mine very well. So let's see what we got here. Uh, I think uh, Electro Cannon, 150. I mean, either way I look at it, I'm just kind of in a bad spot. Bot. I think I just do this again. I know, at least I know that they can't counter energy me, energy me again, right? Like that's like at least a little bit of a feel better situation. So let's let's just do our strong charge, um, and then I think that we actually have to go take out that Macargo. I guess I could uh, I could Lele for Guzma. I think I might Lily this turn though. Lily seems fine. Uh, we can attach an energy here and then just uh, Lily for four. And then next turn, we're getting somewhere. 
that feels okay. So I think, uh, yeah, I actually just want the Mimikyu out of here. But I don't know, Guzma, the Macargo, then I just am worried that then if I take another knockout, then that Mimikyu is still around, and they're just going to counter energy and knock me out. It just, it's just, this is, now they're playing head games with me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, oh, I'm just feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. All right, let's, uh, let's go Nest Ball. Let's take a look inside this deck real quick. I think that probably... Grubbin doesn't feel bad to get, but it also does feel bad to get because I think it could just spread more damage on my side of the field. So I think that I may I can't get three uh Pika Volt out. So let's just let's just fail that. That's fine. And then let's just pass. Sure. Uh we're gonna do that. I know that that Mimikyu cannot copy my Tapu Wilderness GX, so that's good. I think on the turn where I would get copycatted. Uh, let's Tapu Wilderness GX. Let's try to organize that to be a thing that happens because then at least, ugh. So maybe I should have gone for the early Tapu Wilderness GX just to ensure that I don't get uh, taken advantage of like that. That could have been good. This is uh, such a slow, painful grind though like this is, <laughs> this is just like this is just the status of the format now as you're just playing against these decks they just try to whittle you away forever with trying to punishment and it just hurts and it just like hurts my soul just to play against these decks but this is uh this is fine this is just totally appropriate let's uh let's see here how many energy do i have in the discard pile now i've got one two three okay so i can retreat Knock out the Oranguru. This thing does not have Psychic Energy on it. Okay, he cannot counter Energy me. I know that. So let's just go, and we're going to retreat this thing and knock out the Oranguru. That seems fine. So let's just do that. I don't really want to put Energy anywhere else right now. I would like to have a free Retreater, but I just don't, so that's fine. Let's just retreat those. I can recycle, you know, recycler those back into the deck. I don't think that my opponent's going to mess with my hand at all, but, like, I kind of do want to eventually top deck something. So that's good. Let's throw those back. I want to top deck an Energy. I need to top deck, like, a Grass um, in order to you know, kind of get another grass onto a Bulu, but I don't actually think, do I need to discard? I don't need to top deck a grass because I'm never going to discard, so that's just fine. Let's just, uh, and I don't want to put my Bulu down yet. I do kind of want to strong charge onto my my own uh, Vika Volt, though. Let's just do that. Let's, you know, because we get two energy on the Vika Volt. Now the Vika Volt attack is a live play, so that's something we want to consider as well. We'll put the, you know, I don't think that the Choice Pan's really going to matter uh but you know you might never know maybe you want to ultra ball something away so let's just nature's judgment no discard i don't think i'm getting attacked you know i don't think i'm getting knocked out would you like to discard no because i'm still behind on prizes so like i don't really need to worry until this next turn about really getting punished here unless they've got like a deoxys in hand you know if they've just got like deoxys dce or something like that but i don't think they actually even play that i think this is like seems very much like a counter energy deck so maybe they are maybe they do maybe they get it nope they just are gonna go and manage more resources here that's all they want to do is just go manage some resources so that's fine i think at this point i do just uh you know i do the heal i heal myself so that i know that i'm not gonna get uh destroyed by copycat again this turn and then maybe I try to knock out the Mimikyu the following turn, something like that. At this point, you've got to start asking, uh, like, is my opponent actually going to ever do anything aggressive enough to just win the game? Or are they just going to sit here poking around with resource management until infinity? I think you can't just, like, manage your resources forever. Eventually, you gotta you got to attack. I mean, this this shrine is not going to get there on my Bulu. They want another Mars. I don't think that they're actively trying to deck me. Like, that doesn't seem like a thing. So I think here I do just go and, I mean, I could Guzma and knock out the Mimikyu. Uh, that doesn't seem right, though, because they could just have Rescue Stretcher. So I think we actually have to just GX. So I'm going to, like, save my energy. I don't think that there's any point in really uh, putting energy anywhere. I could get rally backed. That feels bad, but let's just, uh, yeah, let's just tap a wilderness GX. Uh, and we're going to go from there. We're going to hope for that, you know, now that we're 
now that we're kind of out here, we got to hope that like my opponent doesn't just like completely punish me now that we're ahead on prizes again. And that flippity flap comes right out. They know that that's what they're doing. So they're doing 120. They could do 150. They got 160. I'm like very close to getting knocked out just with that, uh, you know, with this shame in here. So I definitely do want to find another aether conservation area but like i also don't want to put this lele down so i'm kind of in like a weird spot there i think i do just uh i do get that aether concert i do just like kind of go in next turn and just say i've got to set up a little bit at this point like we're close but it's not all lost i need to get another i probably need to get another vika vault into play honestly i could go and i could lele for another rare candy but at this point i also need to be a little bit careful about running out of energy and i do need to kind of top deck a supporter oh they also play trash lanch see i didn't know that one two three four five six seven yeah so that's like super bad as well uh, and now I just, oh, they didn't have choice band. I was going to say things are getting very dire if they have choice band there, but they did not have it. So we have ourselves a Guzma. That is very good. I think that is what we do just want to knock out this shaman, uh, for sure. Uh, take this thing or else it's just going to keep rallying back. So let's, uh, I think we kind of have to just start going here. I don't think that we can just, uh, hang on forever let's just uh i think we need to get ourselves an aether conservation area we need to like counter the shrine for sure so let's just kind of go in and hope that we find it so that's that's okay i'm okay just knocking out that active so let's just do this um yeah let's search for a supporter and we're just gonna go get ourselves a uh Cynthia we need to get a Cynthia so we need to draw cards here that's our last draw supporter in deck so let's go get that and then I think I also to increase my odds I want to strong charge here so let's strong charge we want to throw these onto um probably onto the Vika Volt because I don't want to like just get knocked out uh, I don't want to get this Bulu knocked out so I want it to go like this guy gets knocked out then the Vika Volt then this final Bulu that's like my order of operations that's my game plan so we're gonna hope that it works oh it didn't uh, but that's fine we didn't get ourselves that aether conservation area though there should be like three in deck so that's just a little bit of a bummer but that's fine all right we're just going to nature's judgment here um, no discard and then all my guys are going to take a lot of damage from shrine no please no there's an aether i knew that we were close i could smell it i knew that i knew that we were around here so that's fine that could help uh, my case even if it just buys me like one turn without shrine damage here i only need to take two more knockouts i need to strong charge just one more time onto this bulu while promoting vika Volt, and i can electro cannon then i can uh then i can do nature's judgment uh because we got to assume we always got to be careful of this copycat if my opponent I mean, the could copycat and Nature's Judgment this benched Bulu. That's kind of like my worst case scenario if they do that. Uh, I'll also need to be careful of this Trash Lanch, obviously. Uh, so I think that, you know, they're, they're like kind of golden plays right now. Their game winning plays are to like attack with either Garbodor or Mimikyu and attack a clean GX and let this one kind of just get whittled away by the final turns of. Uh, the final turns of Shrine of Punishment. That's kind of like their ideal game plan. But if they don't have it like that, I mean, they could very easily. They get to smooth over, stack their deck, and instruct. So they can get, oh, nope, but they don't have it like that. So they're just going to be looking to knock out the active Bulu. I have myself a counter stadium, so that's good. I actually don't know if I have enough energy in deck to be, oh, Crushing Hammer, yikes. Okay, so they got me there. They're going to move off the Vika Volt. That's a heads-up play. I like that. They know that the Vika Volt is the one coming out next. So what do I do from here? I've got one Lele left in deck. I've got one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five Grass Energy accounted for. So I have two Grass Energy at large, and then I've got one, two, three Lightning Energy accounted for. 
So that means that I have uh, two lightning energy. So one grass and two lightning. So I can still strong charge a little bit, but I need to find myself my other energy recycler as well in order to close out this game, which is just a little bit. Oh, they've got counter catcher. Okay, I thought that oh my gosh and then they just they smoothed over now they're going to instruct so this is that game winning scenario that i told you guys about that i think that yes they get to just knock out this guy they were able to get the counter and uh, the counter catcher i didn't realize that that was going to be their play and then they get to copycat so this is just this is a mess i mean this is horrible so that's fine i need to knock this thing out with vika volt and i need them to not do that again uh, whatever they just did, I need them to not do that again. And uh, yeah, so then uh, we could be fine. Or I need them to not find a, a shrine. So I think I can do that. That's first things first. That needs to happen. Then we can also, let's see. I mean, if they just have energy Guzma, like they win. So that's like kind of rough. think that potentially, huh, let's see here. Okay, let's... uh. Ultra Ball away, the Choice Band, and another Ultra Ball. Let's go get those. Okay, so we're going to find ourselves. we got Vika Volt, and we've got Lele. And we've got ourselves three energy left in deck. Okay, so I can just go get myself another Vika Volt here. I don't really need it, but sure. Let's just go get it. I just kind of wanted to check out the deck real quick. I'm done. Okay, so like I think here... Uh, that the trash lanch, trash lanch is obviously very good. Macargo is probably going to be how they win their game, though. So let's just uh, let's just do this. Yeah, let's sure. Uh, let's do that. Let's uh, strong charge, or let's do. Yeah, we're going to strong charge one of these. Yep, and then we're going to get one here, and then one onto the lele, and then I want to Guzma up the Macargo, and I think that this is maybe my only chance at like not losing uh is doing this and then attacking with this guy and then hopefully if we can actually knock out the macargo and they aren't able to stack um the game winning cards on top of their deck then i could just win so that's like kind of my thought there i can ultra ball for if they don't get it um you know if they don't counter my stadium then I can Ultra Ball for, you know, Guzma for game. But they've got another uh, Ultra Ball for Lele for Guzma for game. But they've got it, and they've got the Shrine. They had everything they needed in game in hand. So there's not – I feel like I made that pretty close, but I don't really know that there's much more I could have done. Obviously, the early copycat there. I did play right into that, but, like, I don't really know if there's too much more I could have done. I mean, eventually I have to Nature's Judgment, right? Uh, I guess that, or like my game plan just has to be attack with Vikavolt every turn, and I don't really know that my list was built to attack with Vikavolt every turn. So those are my first, literally first three games with Vikavolt. This is my very first, uh, or Bulu, and this is my very first Bulu list for this format. So let me know what you guys think of it. This is kind of just a rough uh, starting place for Bulu Vikavolt in this format. I feel like the deck is just a little underpowered, a little inconsistent. Uh, that being said, it could do big things in Philadelphia as well. I know a lot of people are hype on this thing. Uh, it's just not personally my favorite. I think Rayquaza's just got a lot more going for it. I love that Rayquaza doesn't remove its energy from play either when it attacks. I feel like it just has a stronger board position uh, at all times. But that being said, Rayquaza is more hated right now. So, you you know, Bulu definitely has the leg up in that kind of way. So anyways, thank you all for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub the channel, ring that bell. Let me know what you guys think of the list uh, in the comments below. Make sure to check out the Etsy store and the Patreon stuff in the comments below as well. And all of the weekly deck discussion stuff that I am hosting on my Patreon page. Thank you all for watching. Peace.